Mia wanted to say hello, so let's tell this little one hello. Go ahead. And hi everybody. So I'm here with my mom. I'm not going to be cooking or eating or anything, but I'm just going to be watching her cook and having a little chat with you guys. And then my mom is going to dig in with this delicious, the beef short ribs and all the ingredients you're using. Right, mom? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's dig into the cooking, guys. Bye. So this is how it's looking, y'all. Nice and jiggly tender. Okay, so the next time you see it, it'll be on the plate. This look good, y'all. Hi everyone, I am T. Welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight I'm going to be making short ribs. Now my husband went and he got some beef short ribs and he was like, hey, I need to make this. So I'm like, okay, I got you. So we're going to get into it. The beef is already seasoned, but I'm going to show you how it looks right now. And also all the seasonings that I did put on it so far. So let's go. Okay, so right now I have the short ribs. Remember I told you guys that I will let you know. Um, I will show you how it looked before it goes in the pot and I'll also show you the seasonings that I put on it now for the short ribs We want to make it very simple as far as the flavors kind of like how you make steak Well the seasonings that you put on steak at least that's how I like to do it as usual do it how you like to do it And these are the seasonings so the only thing I have on it is some Badia complete seasoning <laughs> shout out to <laughs> Right. Shout out to Adrian Cooking and Food Review because he is the one who put me on to Badia Complete Seasoning and Sazon Complete. Then we have ground black pepper. We also have some garlic powder and onion powder. We're going to get into the cooking right now. Now we're going to put the short ribs into the pot. But here's one thing that I'm going to do that's a little bit new for me. Mia, pass me that salt. Okay. Aye, aye, mom. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Okay, so Mia is going to be my little helper today because I have rain with me and, Yay! you know, I don't want to get too close to the stove with her. Yeah, because you can burn rain, Mommy. Yep, so this is mom life. This is what we got to do. Well, I'm going to be doing something a little bit new for me. I'm going to put a little bit of pink salt into the pot just to make sure that my beef is nice and salty. Not over salted, but, you know, just the right amount. So, I've never seen anyone do that, but I want to try it. So, I'll tell you how it works out. So, right before I put the beef in, I'm going to put some garlic in the pot just to flavor the oil. Now, my pan is really hot. I'm going to start putting my short rib in. These are some really nice pieces. My husband went to the butcher to get them, and they look pretty good and they smell good but I really don't want to try one I know it already smells amazing in here now that's all I'm gonna put because I don't want to overcrowd my pot mm. this is it for now we're just gonna let it brown I'm just gonna turn them and I'm going to show you how nice and caramelized they are. So this is how it's looking. A few of them got a little bit darker than what I wanted, but it's okay. I'll try to correct that for the next set so you see how it's supposed to be. Also, once this starts to cook down, it's going to give the gravy a nice color, so I guess it's fine. And I won't have to add anything to give it a nice rich color. So this is good. Now, if you guys have seen me cook before, you know that I like to slowly brown my meat. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to turn the stove down and then, you know, slowly give it some color. Okay, y'all. So I'm going to take these out. 
And if you've seen me cook before, you know that I'll put them back in to slowly caramelize everything together. But so far they look good, right? I thought they were short rib ribs, but they're not. They are just regular beef ribs. You know, the big, thick uh, dino beef ribs. So these are what those are. My husband bought a few and then he just had them cut them down. They're just ribs. I know some people put these in the oven, but we are going to cook them in the pot tonight to get them tender. And then tomorrow we may put them on the grill. To smoke them they're gonna be amazing I wonder how big these were before he cut them down because they're pretty big right now they look good though I poured out the the um the oil that was in the pot before because it was browning too fast for me. I don't know if it's because I put the salt in it. So we're just going to go ahead and say I don't like putting the salt in the in the pot. So I'm just going to show you how everything looks right now. And then I'm going to put it back into slowly. So I'm going to turn the stove down at about on low and slowly brown this. So right now, this is how the rib is looking. Looks good. We're going to put it back in. This time, I'm going to cover the pot as well. So it steams and caramelizes at the same time. Y'all, I would love to do a mukbang with this. And also, the thing that I told y'all with the salt, that I put the salt in the oil. Let me know if I was crazy for doing that. So this is the juices that was in there. I'm just going to pour it back into the pot. Okay, so it's looking really good. But you know how I like to build flavors. So I'm going to go ahead and put some more garlic and some thyme in. So my go-to um, herbs for beef is rosemary. But I don't think I have any rosemary. So the thyme will have to do. Okay, y'all. So I have some garlic that I'm going to smash. I'm going to smash it, wash it, and drop them in the pot. Now, this is not a recipe. I didn't see anyone make these this way. This is just how I'm choosing to do mine. Now for the liquid in this um, short rib, I like to put chicken stock into my meats. I don't like to do water because I feel like the chicken stock adds more um, flavor and mm, to the gravy or the sauce that's in the beef. And also, you know, it, 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 it adds the collagen in there, which I like. It gives the, the broth some nice, velvety, rich taste. Or texture if you want to say like it could have texture let me know if y'all know what I'm saying okay guys let's see how our meat is looking so I turned the stove down really really low I'm gonna put it back on high and put a little bit of chicken stock in it now that I've poured it in I'm gonna just let it sizzle away and evaporate you see that That looks so good. It's so juicy, it's unreal. And now that um that liquid is evaporating. I'm gonna add some more and then this time I'm gonna let it slowly braise. This one has a lot of fat on it and I love that. You see how good this is looking, right? Y'all can't tell me I don't know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That looks good, right guys? Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna add some more herbs and build my flavors. Okay guys, so right now I decided that I'm tired and I don't wanna finish the 
the beef ribs in the pot so I decided to put it in my instant pot the only thing I have in there is one habanero two stalks of scallion some thyme and a whole head of garlic so I'll show you guys how this looks when it's done let me pick up one of these and show you it's already, it started to fall off the bone but it's not tender enough so I'm gonna probably leave this in here oh it fell off <laughs> I'm probably going to leave this in here for about um, seven minutes and then it'll be all done. So I'm going to be using some baby portobellas. So I have three heads of fresh spinach that I have to clean. And uh, I don't cut up my spinach. I only cut the stems a little bit and that's about it. So I'm going to show you how I make this short rib spinach and mushrooms. I already washed my greens and cleaned it as you can see right here that's a whole bunch of spinach that's uh, fresh spinach and then right here I have some mushrooms so I'm just gonna pop the top what am I saying pop the stems out you could just break the stem off you don't have to break it all the way out just break it off and put it in a bowl. Let me put it closer so you can see. And I don't cut my mushrooms up. So break it. And I have two containers of this mushrooms. And these are just uh, baby portobellos. And it's really easy to clean now a lot of people don't like to wash their mushrooms I think I was watching a cooking show and the chef was saying that um they simply use a uh, a moist paper towel and wipe all the excess off of it because when the water soaks up the mushrooms when you wash it it gets tough so I'm gonna show you how I just quickly wash mine so by all means if you don't want to wash your mushrooms I guess don't you know do what you want <laughs> I do what I want we'll be happier if you all do it <laughs> do what we want right that's what I think so my goal here is to get the water on quickly and wash it quickly right so I'm just gonna spray them so I get everything off. And then I'm going to pour the water off quickly and that's it. Okay guys, so in the same pot that I did the beef ribs in, I'm putting some more olive oil. And then I'm going to, actually this is one of the times where I want to put the salt in the oil. Kind of like I did earlier. So put a little bit of salt in and quickly pop the mushrooms and just drop them in. And I didn't let them sit wet for a long time because I didn't want the mushrooms to get tough. So as soon as I washed it, I put them in the pan. Okay, so mushrooms are in and you know I put some salt in once it's cooked I'm gonna put my powdered seasonings in right now I'm just gonna put some um, some garlic and thyme in the pan and that'll be it for now now I don't want to cover the pot because I feel that that also makes the mushroom tough so I want to cook it on high heat in oil now, that method that I did earlier with the beef ribs, when I put the salt in the pan, the only con I have to that is that I'd have to turn the stove down a little bit lower so that the beef ribs could caramelize a little bit slower to my liking. Otherwise, I think it's a good idea because if you're a person who adds seasoning to your meat while it's cooking, you know, put in, put in a little bit of salt in the pan, coat everything and it you know sears it nicely and get that salt to 
sink into the meat or get the meat to soak up the salt. So if you try putting some salt in the pan with your beef, let me know how that works. Or if you try it with your mushrooms, let me know how it works. So right now this oil is nice and seasoned, like it tastes as if I don't have to put, put anything else in the mushrooms. So all I'm gonna do, like I said, is add some thyme and some herbs, some garlic. Okay y'all, so I lied. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little piece of habanero in the pan some garlic, thyme, and scallion. And you see how the, it's making uh, liquid in the pan even though it's not covered. And I have it on high heat. That's exactly why you don't want to cover the pan or add liquid to your mushrooms. If you can uh, cook your stuff on higher heat, so let's say use the highest, the, the burner, the biggest burner on the stove. That should help with keeping the liquid out of the pan. Usually I don't like this much liquid in the pan. So like I said, put your pan on the highest burner so that you're sure that no liquid will form in the pan. Let's start to season. Now, I always say it and I have to keep saying it. Adrian Cooking and Food Reviews. Put me on to Badia Complete Seasoning. It's bomb. Please try it. And tell and go over there and see all the recipes that he does cook with it. And let him know that I sent you. So, garlic. Onion powder. And like I said, the brand doesn't matter. Use whichever brand you prefer. A little bit of lari. Just because I think I just like the flavors of Lowry seasoning salt. Even if I don't use a lot of it. So, a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. I just feel like Lowry's is a staple seasoning in my kitchen. I don't know why because I use a lot of herbs and a lot of flavors anyways. But I just like it. So, this is the Maggie Cube that I'm using today. I'm just using a half of it. And you're probably thinking that that's too much salt. But remember that I'm adding the spinach and it's going to create a lot of liquid, which is going to saturate the salt. Okay, so that's a little more than a half. You can see that the mushrooms have uh, reduced drastically in size. So there's no question that they're done. What I'm going to do now is just add my spinach. And like I said, I don't cut my spinach up. All I do is cut the ends off, wash it, and drop it in the pot. Now, I'm not going to put them all at once because I don't want the liquid to build up too much in the pan. And Adrian, I'm not using fish sauce tonight. So I tasted the mushroom, guys, and it's really good. It's not tough at all. So I guess washing it quickly, dropping it in the pan right away, and uh, cooking it on high heat definitely helps it not to become tough. But you can eat it just like that. It tastes like meat. Very well seasoned. And I don't like when my spinach overcook either, guys. So as soon as they wilt, I'm turning the stove off. I was going to wait, but I'm just going to put it all in because I think if I do it little by little the spinach that I put in first is going to overcook and I don't want that and I'm not putting any fresh onions or anything like that because I think it doesn't need it but you can if you want to and to be honest sometimes I do and this is a meal that I cook on the regular whenever I cook beef I always always have mushrooms and spinach with it so my dinner would look like this I have mushroom spinach beef rice and um avocado or sometimes I'll leave the rice out and I'll have everything else I hope you enjoyed my cooking let me know what you think let me know if you try it <laughs> and don't be a stranger to my channel I'll see you guys next time bye the spinach and the mushrooms are done like I said I turn I'm gonna turn the pan off right now because as soon as it wilts that's all I need so I hope you like how it looks like I said I know some people like to cut their greens I don't I don't see the point especially if it's uh, fresh spinach okay guys so the beef is ready 
had to put more chicken stock in the pan to make sure it doesn't burn but it's real tender guys so I decided to uh, let it pressure for 15 minutes rather than 10 I think I said I was gonna do it for 7 but I did it for 15 minutes and it's perfect you can see if I move it it's falling off the bone let me try to get a nice one that light in is better so this is how it's looking y'all nice and jiggly tender okay so the next time you see it it'll be on the plate okay y'all so look at this beef it's nice and tender this one split apart and you can see the fat in it this is mine because I love that. <laughs> but yeah. This is delicious. Don't this look good, y'all? You know, I gotta show you. Let me try to look at that. You see that juice? Yes that's what you want okay that's exactly what you want all right I'm gonna dig in the plate is so full this plate is uh, for somebody special they wanted avocado and some noodles so this is some cheese noodles this is some cheese noodles what am I saying? That's the beef. <laughs> and then some cheese noodles, y'all. Alright.